Ladies and gentlemen, Tello for love, Malo le soy fua. My wife and I are, are so delighted to be able to host you for dinner this evening. However wet it may have been, I am told uh, that I have been credited in Samoa with bringing these heavy rains, shades perhaps of my father's godlike status in Vanuatu. Heralds, I can only hope, of a particularly good harvest. Now, many of you, uh, I know, have nobly travelled a very long way to be in Apia, often, by all accounts, by several different airlines and several different countries over many, many hours and time zones. But it is, of course, quite normal that our friends from this corner uh, of the world travel great distances to attend international meetings. So perhaps uh, it is only fair that they occasionally get a break from that. And, <laughs> and, and, and I can only say it will be interesting to see this evening uh, who has the most success in battling jet lag. <laughs> it is, though, um, a particular joy for me to return here and to deepen my understanding of Samoa and her people. I first visited, can you believe this, Samoa in 1974 as a young naval officer aboard uh, a ship called HMS Jupiter. And from my naval journal, which I kept at the time throughout my naval career, I, I recall that we held a reception on board at the end of which the two splendid hotel-owning sisters, Aggie Gray and Aunt Mary, got up and danced, as I described it, in the beautiful Samoan style. And it is a happy coincidence to be back here on this occasion, at which I attended an event at a hotel that is still named in honour of Aggie Gray some 50 years later. So it just shows how unbelievably old I am. But ladies and gentlemen, it remains a lifelong aspiration to have visited all the countries of the Commonwealth, although nowadays uh, it seems uh, to be a race against our happily increasing numbers, as well as doctor's orders. But I do want to offer uh, my heartfelt thanks once again to the government and people uh, of Samoa for the wonderful way in which you have welcomed us. There is, there is so much to learn from Samoa's outstanding hospitality, the strength of the Samoan spirit and, and the immense pride that Samoans have for your country, your culture, not to mention the wonderful way in which your villagers have decorated their roads and communities. And, and I, I think and hope I speak for many of us when I say how deeply our experiences have touched us here and how they will stay with us always. In particular, if I may say so, the unforgettable magic of the singing and dancing at the end of the opening ceremony today. As far as I'm concerned, it raised my spirits to the roof and made me feel unbelievably happy. Now this, as you know, is the first Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting to be held in a small island state in the Pacific. In this nation of 200,000 souls are gathered this week the representatives of 2.7 billion people, a third of the world's population. And once again, the extraordinary diversity and enduring power of the Commonwealth are proudly on display. And as I look around the room uh, this evening, it gives me enormous pride to think that there, are, there really are very few occasions in which leaders with such diverse experiences and perspectives can come together over dinner as friends and indeed as a, as a family 
to learn from and to draw strength from one another. Together with the boundless potential of the countries and people who make up our unique and incredibly special organization, your friendship, your friendships offer us the means to confront the challenges we all face, to serve those who are most vulnerable in our societies and to embrace the myriad opportunities before us. The Scottish poet and essay, essayist and travel writer Robert Louis Stevenson, who lived and died uh, on this beautiful island and is commemorated in, in this museum, his old house, wrote that one should not judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. So as we look from this um, idyllic place across the world, dark clouds have gathered over many regions, but the Commonwealth can surely be a cause for, of hope and healing. International challenges on such a scale call for international solution through dialogue and discussion, for, for that is where eventually peace resides. The sheer scale and diversity of Commonwealth membership, spanning the entire globe and embracing more than one third of the human race, gives us the understanding, the credibility, and indeed the clout to play a full role in promoting and protecting peace and prosperity. So, ladies and gentlemen, I can only hope, hope that your vital discussions this week and the commitments you make uh, uh, to one another will plant the seeds of a more resilient future, one uh, in which people across the Commonwealth today and the generations who follow can thrive and fulfil not just their own potential, but the potential of the global family to which we all belong. So let us remember that the potential of our Commonwealth is, is actually unparalleled in global terms. Therefore, in raising our glasses uh, together this evening, let us celebrate that aspiration and the strength of the partnership between us. Ladies and gentlemen, 